This is a short six minute video designed to help vintage telephone restorers in the UK. As I mentioned in previous videos about the exchange in a box, telephone dials, particularly rotary telephone dials, need to be calibrated probably only once every 20, 30 years, but calibrated so they'll reliably dial out on a uh, either a telephone exchange or on an exchange in a box. Telephone exchanges that n are more temperamental than others are talk talk exchanges. And the dial, as I've seen, you've seen in a previous video, needs to be running at exactly the right speed and exactly at the right, what they call, make to break ratio. On this video, I'm going to show you a simple adjustment of how to adjust make to break using just a, a simple resistor as a tool and a screwdriver. So let's begin. So I take the case off. Just loosen the screw, temporarily remove the handset and then press on the dial to remove the case. So we're in there and then to release the dial all you do is, is loosen the screw there and the dial just lifts forward and lifts off. So there you've got the dial, obviously still attached by the wires but plenty of room to work. Very often on some of the older ones, there's actually also a screw there that you need to take out, but that's not, not on this particular one. So then it's just that screw there that you just need to loosen the clamp. Don't need to take it all the way out, just loose. And then that just pops off. It's there, and then the plastic dust cover just literally lifts off. And there you've got the dial exposed, ready to work on. The bit we're going to work on is that little, what they call the pulsing springs there. Now ideally, you'd adjust this make to break ratio with a proper tester. And this is the tester we've got in here that allows us to do the pull speed and the pulse ratio. And we can do it very accurately and uh, very quickly. But for those who haven't got this particular tester or a tester like it, I'm now gonna show you the manual method. As I mentioned, just using a simple quarter watt resistor. Just as a quick side note, the dial didn't change, they call these trigger dials, and they didn't really change from, this is a 1950s, what they call a type 12 trigger dial, and this is a type 21, 1986 trigger dial, and if you look, the mechanism, apart from the fact some have got plastic parts in the new one, the mechanism is actually the same. So the procedure I'm going to show you is the same for... 1980s, 1970s, 1960s and 1950s dial as, uh, as across the piece. Good old standardisation. Yeah, so the reason for this lack of calibration is, I believe, is wear on contacts. If I, let, if I turn the dial round and then slowly let it come back, when it gets to the maximum height on the cam, you can see the cam there, just point it with the my little pointer there that's the that's the cam and these are the contacts that we're going to adjust and what i believe happens is the gap on these uh, the contact heads wear out ever so slightly it doesn't take much and that's what that's the area that determines the make to break ratio and i found obviously the easiest way of doing it is to use that wonderful test i showed you earlier but a, a cheap and simple way quick nerdy way if you like is to use uh, the leg of a resistor which just happens to be the same dimensions as, as a, the right feeler gauge and just make sure that the wire just catches as it goes through as you can see that as you can probably see hopefully that's going through without catching on the heads so what i need to do is either get a little pair of pliers we can just do it with a screwdriver but close that gap up a little bit and just enough so that when you go through it catches just it goes through still but if you can see there it catches on the way through and if once you've done that, that actually gives you the correct make to break ratio. Bit of a dirty one, but nice and simple and saves the need for using a complex tester. Once you've completed this calibration, along with the getting the pulse speed correct, as I've mentioned in a previous video, the advantages, as well as it working on the stage exchange in a box system that I've developed, it will also work on all telephone lines, including, in the UK at least, including TalkTalk. Talk. 
which is a big advantage. It means you don't have to buy expensive and often temperamental pulse-to-tone converters. For the calibration tool, as I mentioned, I'm going to use a quarter-watt resistor, and they all are seen to, if I use a little measurement device, uh, if I measure it, it usually it should be 0.44, between 0.44 and 0.45 millimetres. If I compare that with a number 17 feeler gauge, see that's the 0.4445 round that. So around that, and I believe that they're all the same, but it might be an idea to, to, to double check.